Hello, my name is Laura and I'm the owner of Fairy Tales. Today I'll be going over a process to convert your videos into animated GIFs. The only tool that you should require for this tutorial is a copy of Photoshop CS5 Extended. Earlier and newer versions of the software may have the same or similar tools utilized during the tutorial, but my lack of familiarity with those versions means that I would not be able to assist you if you had any questions. The first step is to select the video that you want converted into an animated GIF. Photoshop can read a number of different video formats, including AVI, MPEG, and MP4. I'll be using a recent video that I took of my ferrets, Buzzworth and Dasinex, licking one another after being given ferritone. I open that video in Photoshop. I'll be primarily working with the animation panel. If it is not displaying in your workspace, go to Window and select Animation. The animation panel allows me to preview the video, move along the timeline, and perform various other changes to it. I prefer to initially work in the timeline mode, which will allow me to perform various tasks that would not otherwise be available to me. If you are in the frames mode, identified at the top left tab in the animation panel, select the timeline mode at the bottom right. I start by identifying where I'd like my animation to start and end. I like to drag the current time indicator, identified by the vertical red line top of a blue tab, to each point. Once selected, I drag the blue work area bars found at the beginning and end of the video to these points. These define the work area, which I can confirm by playing the video using the play button or the space bar on my keyboard. Now that I have selected the duration of my clip, I need to crop it. I go to the animation panel menu, located at the top right corner of the window, and select Trim Document Duration to Work Area. This removes all the other superfluous footage, which I do not want to include in the animated GIF. Now I want each frame of the video to be converted into a layer. In the Animation Panel menu, I select Flatten Frames into Layers. In the Layers panel, I delete the original video layer. I no longer have need of it. If I did not complete this step at this time, it would result in a blank frame during this next step. Select Make Frames from Layers in the Animation Panel menu in order to create a frame from each layer. At this point, I swap the Frames mode by clicking the button located at the bottom right of the Animation Panel. Here I can view the proposed animation in its entirety by clicking the Play button. By default, the animation only plays once. I want my finalized animated GIF to play endlessly, so I use the drop-down selector at the bottom right corner of the animation panel to set it to forever. It will now repeat upon reaching the final frame of the animation. The default size of my image, 1280 by 720 pixels, is far too large. I resize it by going to Image in the drop-down menu and selecting Image Size, or by using the keyboard shortcut alt Control i since this image will eventually be displayed on Tumblr, I want the final file size to be small enough to be hosted by the site. Decreasing the dimensions of the image will also decrease its file size, so I select 250 pixels in width. Now ready to save my image. I select File and then Save for Web and Devices, which can also be accessed by using the keyboard shortcut alt shift Control s the new window that opens allows me to change a variety of settings that ultimately affect the quality, and by extension, the file size, of my final image. I know that Tumblr will not allow any hosted image over 1 megabyte to be animated. With the default settings shown, the final image will be too big. I can make the file smaller by changing these parameters. I could elect to reduce the colors utilized in the image from 128 to 64. However, this results in losing the pink coloration in my ferret's noses and paws, which I don't like. I instead increase the lossy, which is a form of data compression that discards some information. As you can see, increasing this number significantly reduces the quality of the image, so I settle on the lossy of 8. This allows me to reduce the file size without losing too much quality. Now that I am done, I click the Save button at the bottom of this window and save my image to my desktop. And that's it! Now I have an adorable animated image of my ferrets, which I can post to Tumblr. Thanks for watching my tutorial!